It's the middle of January here in Houston and it is cold. It is cold, oh. which is why today we are going to put our spin on a thick, creamy, hearty vegetable stew. And you are going to love this. It is great for the family. It's going to be a great thing to warm up to. Absolutely. So stick around. We'll show you guys how to get this on your table fast. I went ahead and added two tablespoons of avocado oil. It's Chosen Foods brand is our favorite brand. And I brought it up to a medium heat. And I'm going to go ahead and add some field roast sausages. These are plant-based sausages. It's one of our favorites. If you're looking for it in the store, it's going to look like this. It's field roast is the name. And this is an apple and sage flavor that we're using today. But we're only using one of the, one of the sausages today. So we're going to want to go ahead and saute these for about five to six to seven minutes. What you want to do is get these nice and crispy because we do want some caramelization and crispiness on these. So we'll let these go for a few minutes. As you can see, these are nice and crispy and they're going to be so good on the top of our stew. So I'm just going to take these out now and put them on a little plate here. We're going to set them aside for a few minutes while we finish cooking the rest of the stew. Next thing we're going to do is add another about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more to the pan. The pan's already hot. What we're going to do next is we're going to take our chopped red onion and it's beautiful. So good. I'm going to go right in. And I also chopped up, I used four cloves of garlic today just in case it's kind of small. You could use three or four depending on how much you like. And we're just going to let these saute again for about five to six more minutes. Just want to get them nice and translucent and let their fragrance start developing. We have sweated these down, got them a little bit caramelized, the onions and the uh, garlic. So the next thing we're going to go in with is two carrots with a pretty, uh, not a fine chop, uh, pretty coarsely chopped bite-sized pieces. We're also going with in, two, in with two celery stalks. And I used also the leaves on the top of the celery stalks. Those leaves have so much flavor. You definitely want to include those as well. But your celery should be finely chopped. So we're going to put all that in. And again, saute down at least three to four more minutes. All right, we want to come in here now that I've at least have sauteed for two, three, four minutes. I'm going to make it a little well in the middle of the pan. And I'm just going to take a tomato paste. It's in a tube. I love tomato paste in a tube. It's so much easier to use than having to get the tomato paste out of the can, especially when you're only using two tablespoons. So we're just going to add those in. We're going to add in about, I think this is about a teaspoon of fresh chopped thyme leaves. We're going to want to get all that incorporated and mixed well together. Sadie, are you waiting for some vegetable soup? It's good, huh? The next thing we're going to do is add two chopped tomatoes. Oh, they're beautiful. And the liquid. You're going to use the liquid to help uh, deglaze the pan. So stir it around really well. Deglazing the pan is just nothing more than getting all those tasty bits off the bottom. I've got that deglazed look in my eyes right now. Ooh, deglazed look. But um. Okay, well. <laughs> Next, we're going to go in with a cup of good red wine. Just going to go ahead and pour all that in. Turn my heat back up just a little bit. And let me just say something to you guys. Use a wine that you would drink. Don't go too cheap on your wine that you use for cooking. If you wouldn't drink it out of a glass, then probably you wouldn't want to have it in your food. So we just have a nice Columbia Valley red wine blend, and it is from the state of Washington. Washington makes some great wines. So we're just going to stir this really well and incorporate it all. Let it come up to a slow simmer. We need to get those carrots cooked. So we're going to end up cooking this for about 35 to 45 minutes once we get all the ingredients in here. We're going to go ahead and get this up to a medium simmer. And now that everything has come up to a nice simmer, we're going to go ahead and add in three russet potatoes that I went ahead and peeled and just cut them into large cubes. We're also going to use eight ounces of cremini mushrooms and I just quartered these on the small ones I just cut them in half but I cut the larger ones in quarters and we're also going to go in with one cup of frozen peas. I really really like the small petite peas but our store did not have those this time so these look more like just regular peas. 
If you can get your hands on the petite peas, those are absolutely the best. So we're just gonna stir this well to get everything combined. We've mixed everything really well. So we're gonna go in now with five cups of a vegetable broth. This is an organic vegetable broth from our local central market grocery store. You guys haven't learned the secret when you have one of these twist off tops on these boxes. You try to pour it this way, it slops everywhere. So if you put the little spout on top, you don't get a lot of splash. So this is a 32 ounce box of vegetable stock, which is only four cups. So I went ahead and made a little bit of the Better Than Bouillon um, vegetable base stock as well. So that's my fifth cup of stock going in. All right, we're gonna stir that really well. Next, we're gonna go in with one and a half to two tablespoons of just a good soy sauce, whatever you have on hand. Our spin on this is we are going to use a black vinegar. This is a homemade black vinegar. I'll link the recipe down in the description box for you guys if you're interested in making it. If you don't have black vinegar, feel free to use rice wine vinegar or something similar to that. We're also going in with a teaspoon of white miso paste, and that is gonna give this so much flavor. Miso just brings an umami and it brings a depth to the base of the stock. So we've got everything mixed well together here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put in, I think we have enough salt going on right now, but I'm gonna add just about maybe a teaspoon of black pepper. Everybody knows I love my black pepper. So we're going in with that. We're gonna make it one final stir. Let it stir really well, get it all mixed up together. And we are gonna let this cook on like a medium simmer for about 35 to 45 minutes. I'll come back and check it at about the 35 minute mark. We wanna make sure and get those vegetables cooked, especially the carrots. You want us to make sure they are fork tender when you're ready to serve this stew. So we'll let this cook off for about 35 to 45 minutes and we will come back and see what it looks like at that time. You guys can see this is bubbling away. It's been cooking for about 45 minutes. And what we're gonna do now, I was gonna say also two things. If this had a chance to reduce down and all that flavor got very concentrated. All those flavors and seasonings we put in there got nice and concentrated. And the other thing I was gonna say is if you don't drink wine or you don't wanna cook with alcohol, you could substitute that for another cup of water or another cup of vegetable broth, whatever you prefer. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take approximately three cups of the stew in its current status or its current form. We're gonna put it into a blender and we are gonna blend it until it's creamy. And that is gonna turn this soup into a creamy, hearty stew. So we've got that in there. I'll put just a little bit of the liquid just to help it out. Gonna pop it over here on our Vitamix blender. If you don't have a Vitamix, you don't need a high speed blender. Whatever kind of blender you have in your house works just fine. I'm just gonna put it in here. I am gonna turn it on. Slow, then I'm going to turn it up. We blended this until it was nice and creamy. Be very careful, it is hot. But look at how beautiful and smooth and creamy that is. That is going to transform this ordinary stew into a creamy, beautiful, unctuous, I wish you guys could smell this. It smells like those comforting Saturday afternoons when something's nice and warm and toasty to eat. So we're gonna stir this up really well. Look how beautiful that comes together. It's gonna make it creamy, hearty, smooth. We still have vegetables in there. We still have the mushrooms and the carrots and the onions have cooked down. There are potatoes in there. It looks incredible. This is amazing. Isn't it beautiful? We are gonna plate this up and do a taste test. Stay tuned. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Take a look at that, guys. And it smells like heaven. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I can't wait to try it. I'm gonna try it. Mm. Okay, here we go, taste test. Love that look. Um, How does it taste? You guys. It's so hearty and so creamy and so just incredibly packed with flavor. And that soy sauce and the, the miso just hit the mark on the whole thing. You guys have got to try this. 
I want to try. I think you should try it. All right, my turn. Try it out. Mmm. Oh my gosh. I hate to say it, but that actually tastes like meat. This is good. It is wonderful. All those layers and layers of flavors oh just gosh. built together and they made the most incredibly hearty, creamy mm. stew. I haven't had anything that good in a long time. This is a 10 out of 10. That may be one of my favorite recipes. Mm. You really need to make this. It is a warm, warm food on a cold winter's day. Oh my gosh, it's so good and good for your body. I can't wait to go get a bowl of this and go sit down and watch the next half of the game. This is oh, going to be I know. so good. Watching those Texans, you know. Oh, great. <laughs> we just lost thousands of subscribers. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I'm still a Texans fan. It's, and I love him in spite of it. I know. All right, Miss Dallas. I know. Anyway, we hope you guys enjoyed seeing this today. We hope you will try mm -hmm. this out. Yes. If you do, let us know. Drop a comment down below and let us know what your experience is with mm -hmm. it. Also, do you think there's anything that we could have added to it maybe that might have made it even better? I was thinking maybe... I don't think so. Maybe a little barley might Ooh, be a good addition. That would addition, be a nice or some chewy... Yeah. Lentils maybe Ooh, or something. Yes. Just something to ah. give it a little bit of a different body flavor to it. Mm. But anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you coming by and we hope everybody's staying safe and yes. doing well. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, Living the Alleyway, please do so. Please do. We would love to have you become part of our YouTube family. And if you enjoyed this recipe today, give it a big thumbs up. Mm -hmm. and please it, comment, comment, comment. Comment, comment, comment. And Let's let us know if it's good, bad, and different. Absolutely. And give us a thumbs up because it really does help with our channel. And again, we appreciate you all and thank you for your watching. We love you all and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Rolling. 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 Validation. Rolling. Do you need validation? Do you need closure? Rolling, sweetie. <laughs> Rolling. 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 All right, we're rolling. Rolling.